Welcome to Lecture 4 for the Pentateuch. This lecture will cover Part 3 of our study on the book of Genesis. Roman numeral 12. Genesis chapters 21 through 24 focus on the story of the biblical character Isaac. Letter A. Sarah gives birth to a son. Number 1. Abraham calls this son Isaac. The name Isaac in Hebrew means laughter. He was named this way because that was both Abraham and Sarah's reaction when God told them that they would have a son. However, this is not to be seen in a negative way because Sarah says naming him laughter would be a testimony to everyone who hears that they had a child at such an old age. In fact, this was accomplished when Abraham was 100 years old, making Sarah 90. Secondly, Abraham sends Hagar and Ishmael away. Because of Hagar's mocking of Sarah, Sarah convinces Abraham to send Hagar and Ishmael away, even though Abraham did not want to do this because Ishmael was still his son. However, God interceded and told Abraham that it would be okay to send them off because he would make Ishmael a great nation because he was Abraham's son. Unfortunately, after Hagar and Ishmael left, they were about to die from dehydration when the angel of God appeared to Hagar and told her that Ishmael would not die. We find out from the text here that she was actually a little ways away from Ishmael because she did not want to see him perish. This is also then when she notices a well and they both are able to get water. Ishmael would have been around 16 to 19 years old at this time. Number three, Abraham makes a covenant with Abimelech. Abimelech and his chief captain, Fickle, approached Abraham, asking for him to swear to treat him and his family well because they had done the same to him. Abraham swears to this, but he then mentions that Abimelech's servants had violently taken a well away from him. Abimelech promised that he had no idea of this instance, but he would make it right. Therefore, they made a sacrificial covenant, and Abraham gave Abimelech seven lambs for the seven wells Abraham had dug there. This made Abraham call the place Be'er Sheba, meaning well of the oath or well of the seven. Letter B. Abraham attempts to sacrifice Isaac. When Isaac was anywhere between 12 and 30 years of age, God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his own son. So, Abraham left with Isaac and two servants. Three days later, they got to the place where God told Abraham to make the sacrifice. So, Abraham and Isaac left alone to go worship the Lord. When they got to the place for sacrifice, Isaac asked Abraham where the offering was. Abraham replied that God would provide a lamb, an obvious reference to Isaac himself. Abraham then took Isaac, bound him to the altar, and was about to thrust his knife through him when an angel of the Lord stopped Abraham. They then saw a ram stuck in the brush and offered it instead of Isaac. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 17 through 19 reveals that Abraham had such great faith in the Lord that he knew that if he killed his own son that God would raise him from the dead. After this, the angel reiterates the promises made by God to Abraham and, since it's said in the first person as God himself, this demonstrates that the angel may have possibly been a Christophany. Interestingly, all of this took place on Mount Moriah, which is near modern-day Jerusalem and near Golgotha, or Calvary. Letter C. Sarah dies and is buried in the cave of Machpelah. Sarah died at the age of 127 years old. This would make Abraham 137 and Isaac 37. 
Interestingly, this was actually not Abraham's land, but because of his fame and goodness to the people around him, he was able to purchase the land from a man named Ephron the Hittite. The Hittites were the children of Heth, who was a son of Canaan. He purchased this land for 400 shekels of silver. Abraham then buried Sarah in the field of Ephron and specifically in the cave of Machpelah. Letter D. Isaac marries Rebekah. Knowing that Abraham was toward the end of his life, made now more apparent with the passing of his wife Sarah, he called his eldest servant and made him perform an oath to not allow his son Isaac to marry any of the daughters of the Canaanites. Instead, he was to go back to where Abraham was from and find him a wife there. The servant swore this oath and then set out to find Isaac a wife. The sign he was looking for was a woman who would be willing to give both him and his ten camels water to drink. This would have been hundreds of gallons of water. Seeing the beautiful Rebekah, the servant approached her for water and she offered both him and his camels drink. This was the obvious sign he was looking for, so he gave her expensive golden earrings and bracelets and then asked her where she was from. She informed him that she was the great-granddaughter of Nahor, Abraham's brother. After telling Rebekah who he was, she ran and told her family, bringing her brother Laban and father Bethuel back with her. The servant then told them all that Abraham had told him and the sign he was looking for to find Isaac's wife. Then he asked if Rebekah could be Isaac's bride. Both Laban and Bethuel agreed. The servant then worshipped the Lord, gave Rebekah and her family many possessions, partied with them that night, and then left the next morning after asking Rebekah if she was okay marrying Isaac. At 40 years old, and three years after his mother Sarah's death, Isaac met and married Rebekah. Roman numeral 13. Genesis chapters 25 and 26 emphasize the life of a man named Jacob. Letter A. Abraham remarries and dies. Number 1. Abraham marries Keturah. According to verse 6, Keturah was a concubine of Abraham whom he elevated to wife after Sarah's death and Isaac's marriage. Through Keturah, they had six listed children, and those sons had children, and Abraham gave them possessions and sent them away when they were old enough. Secondly, Abraham dies and is buried in the cave of Machpelah. Abraham was 175 years old when he died and he was buried by both his sons Isaac and Ishmael in the field of Ephron and the cave of Machpelah. Thirdly, at the age of 137, Ishmael dies. Fourthly, Esau and Jacob are born to Isaac by Rebekah. Because of Rebekah's barrenness, Isaac prayed, and God allowed her to conceive twins. However, Not knowing what was going on in her womb, she besought the Lord, and he informed her that there were two nations inside of her, and the elder would serve the younger, stronger son. Esau was first born, and because of his red, hairy appearance, he was named Esau, which literally means hairy. He will become the father of the Edomite people. Then, literally coming out on the heel of Esau, was Jacob, whose name now means deceitful, but then it literally meant one who takes the heel. They were both born when Isaac was 60 years old. Esau became a great hunter, and Jacob a mild tent dweller. This caused Isaac to love Esau and especially his great deer meat or venison. And Rebekah loved Jacob. Number five, Esau sells his birthright to Jacob. 
Coming back from a hunt, Esau asked food from Jacob because he felt he was so exhausted that he might die. In fact, this is where Esau gets the nickname Edom. Edom in Hebrew means red. This is on account of the appearance that Esau had from his exhaustion. Jacob agrees to give Esau food only if he gave him his birthright. Esau agrees to give him his birthright, eats, and then despises his birthright from this point on. Letter B. Isaac lies to Abimelech about Rebekah. Because of a famine in the land, Isaac traveled to the Philistine area instead of going to Egypt like his father did many years ago. God actually told Isaac not to go to Egypt because he would bless him in the land he promised Abraham. While there, Isaac lied to Abimelech and said that Rebekah was his sister out of fear for his life. Now remember, this was not the same Abimelech Abraham lied to about 97 years earlier. Abimelech is just a kingly title for the people of that land. One day, Abimelech notices Isaac sporting or caressing Rebekah and calls Isaac out on his lie. Abimelech reasoned that anyone might have had sex with her and brought guilt to the people. This causes Abimelech to command the people not to touch Isaac or Rebekah or they would be killed. In accordance with God's instruction to Isaac, everything Isaac sowed in that land ended up being reaped a hundredfold. And he and his possessions became so mighty that Abimelech asked him to leave. There was even then a dispute about some wells that Isaac redug. So he dug some new ones and Abimelech made a covenant with Isaac in a place called Be'er Sheba. Letter C. Jacob deceives Isaac. Number one. Rebekah devises the plan to trick her husband Isaac. Isaac, realizing he is close to death, calls Esau and tells him to prepare some venison so that he could eat and give Esau his blessing. Overhearing this, Rebekah devised a plan to trick her husband into thinking Jacob is Esau by him wearing goat skins. Jacob was reluctant to do this to his own father, but Rebekah says that she will take the responsibility from anything that comes from it. Upon arriving to give Isaac the goat meat, Isaac is shocked at how quick Esau got the meat, and Jacob even used God in a lie, saying that the Lord provided the meal. Isaac is even more confused because he says his voice sounds just like that of Jacob, so he wanted to feel his skin to make sure. This successfully tricks Isaac whenever Isaac feels the goat skin, and so he blessed Jacob instead of Esau. Number two, Esau receives a partial blessing. Upon arriving from his hunt, Esau realized that Jacob had deceptively taken his blessing. He then told Isaac, but Isaac said there was nothing he could do. Esau then begged for a blessing, so Isaac said that his blessing would be that even though he will serve his younger brother, he will every now and then be able to break from that yoke. And thirdly, Rebekah makes Jacob flee from Esau's hatred. Hearing that Esau hated Jacob because of his trickery, Rebekah told Jacob to flee to her brother Laban's house so that he would not kill him, or until at least his anger had subsided. Rebekah even convinced Isaac to let Jacob go because she said she wanted him to marry one of her people and not those around them. Letter D. Jacob dwells with his uncle Laban. Number one, Isaac sends Jacob away to find a wife. After being manipulated by Rebekah's plan, Isaac told Jacob to go to his brother-in-law Laban's house to take a wife from them instead of marrying anyone who was a Canaanite. Ironically, Esau already had two Canaanite wives, but after realizing what had just happened and his father's instructions to Jacob, he married an Ishmaelite. We believe that this may have been a possible attempt to appease his father or gain his approval. Number two, Jacob sees a heavenly ladder. While sleeping in the city of Luz, 
He had a dream and saw a ladder going to earth from heaven with angels ascending and descending upon it. After seeing this, the Lord stood above the ladder and basically bestowed the promises given to Abraham and Isaac to Jacob, which were the land, a multitude of descendants, and a blessing to others. After having this dream, Jacob awakens and names the place where it happened Bethel, or Bethel, meaning house of God. Jacob then made a vow that if God would take care of him, then he would one day return back to his father's house. Number three, Jacob works seven years for Rachel, but is tricked into marrying Leah. On his way to stay with his uncle Laban, Jacob ran into Laban's daughter Rachel, who was taking care of his sheep. In a possible act of showmanship, Jacob rolled a stone from off a well's mouth to water Rachel's sheep. During this time, the custom was to place a very heavy stone upon a well's mouth so that no one person could come and take the water from it. This demonstrates that Jacob must have been very strong. Jacob then told Rachel who he was, and she went and told her family. After meeting Laban, Jacob bartered a deal to work for his uncle for seven years to marry his daughter, Rachel. We find out here that Rachel was beautiful and well-favored, but she was the younger sister. Now, the long years for him to have to work to marry her may have been on account of the custom that a man during this time must have enough financially to support his wife. This is also when we find out that Rachel had an older sister named Leah. The Bible says that Leah was tender-eyed. Now, this does not mean that she was ugly. In fact, it implies that she was pretty, but her sister Rachel was just more pretty. Seven years later, Jacob went to marry Rachel, but Laban tricked him and made him marry Leah instead. Although... He did not even realize this until the next morning. When confronted by Jacob, Laban's reasoning was that since Leah was the oldest, she was supposed to be married first. Number four, Jacob works another seven years for Rachel, and Leah bears him four sons. After working for 14 years, Jacob finally married Rachel, but... God showed Leah much grace by allowing her to have children since God saw that Jacob loved her less than Rachel. Leah's first son was Reuben, whose name means see a son. She most likely named him this to try and gain favor with Jacob. Her second son was Simeon, whose name means heard implying that the Lord has heard her cries. Her third son was Levi, whose name means attached, named thusly to have her husband join himself to her since she has given him three sons. And the custom of this time was that a son was a sign of a great blessing from God. Leah's fourth and final son was Judah, whose name means praise. This was possibly Leah's confession of her realization that God was doing these things for her and not so Jacob would love her. Therefore, she would praise the Lord. Number five, Jacob has children with Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, and Zilpah, Leah's handmaid. In response to Leah having children but not Rachel, Rachel begged Jacob for children and offered her own handmaid Bilhah as a substitute for herself. Bilhah then had two sons with Jacob, Dan, whose name means judge, and Naphtali, whose name means wrestling. Both of these names were probably given by Rachel to them in an attempt to get the upper hand on her sister, Leah. 
In response to this, Leah took her handmaid Zilpah and gave her to Jacob to have children with as well. Zilpah then has two sons with Jacob, Gad, whose name means troop or fortune, and Asher, whose name means happy. Number six, Leah has two more sons and a daughter named Dinah. Leah's fifth son was Issachar, whose name means hire, possibly symbolizing the reward for giving her handmaid to Jacob. Interestingly, she used the mandrakes given to her by her son Reuben as an assumed aphrodisiac in order to conceive Issachar. Later, she had her sixth son, Zebulun, whose name means dwelling. We believe that she named him this, hoping her husband would dwell with her because she gave him six sons. Then, she even has a daughter, Dinah, whose name means judgment. This could even be an attempt to one-up Bilhah's son, Dan, whose name means judge. Number seven, Rachel finally has a son, Joseph. After Jacob had children with three women, Leah, Bilhah, and Zilpah, God finally gave Rachel a son, and she named him Joseph. Joseph means he will add, probably named this in the hopes of getting another son one day. After this, Jacob decided that it's time to leave, so he made a deal with Laban to divide their sheep and their goats. Jacob would get the speckled and spotted sheep and the brown goats. Jacob even superstitiously had the strong sheep give birth near some rods so that they would have speckled, spotted, or brown kids. And then he gave the weak sheep to Laban. Number eight, Jacob leaves Laban. Letter A, the Lord tells Jacob to return back to his family. Once Laban realized that he got the wrong end of the deal, he got upset, but... God told Jacob to leave. Jacob then told Leah and Rachel that they were leaving, and now we finally understand why Jacob made the livestock with Laban in the first place. This is because Jacob says that God actually gave him a dream of the spotted, speckled, and brown livestock, and God told him to get those from Laban. Letter B. Rachel steals Laban's teraphim. Now, possibly in response to a previous statement by Leah and Rachel that they felt like they were sold as property, on the way from leaving Laban's, Rachel stole his teraphim. Now, this was more than just an idol, but it was also a symbol of birthright during this time. Once Laban realized that they had left and his idol was missing, he pursued after them, but God warned Laban in a dream not to do anything to Jacob. When Laban caught up to them, he expressed his sorrow for not being allowed to tell his children and grandchildren goodbye. And then he asked Jacob why someone stole his idol. Jacob replied that if anyone took his idol, they would be put to death. This caused Laban to search everyone and their dwelling places with the understanding that whoever had the idol would die. When he got to Rachel, she sat on the idol and told her father that she could not get up because she was on her period. Laban then could not find the idol, so Jacob got upset and mentioned that he had worked for him for 20 years. So therefore, He should be allowed to leave. And letter C. Jacob and Laban make a covenant. This covenant was basically their way of promising to be cordial with each other from then on and for Jacob to take care of Laban's daughters and promise to only be married to them. Letter E. Jacob prepares to meet Esau. Number one. Jacob divides his company and presents gifts to Esau. 
Being afraid of what might happen to him when Esau saw him again, Jacob first sent men to tell Esau that he was coming to see him. When they returned, they may note that Esau wanted to see him too with 400 men. Taking this as a possible threat, Jacob divided his company into two groups, his handmaids and their children in the front, and Leah, Rachel, and their children with him. He then further subdivided the group into more bands. In the front were his handmaids and their children. Directly behind them was Leah and her children. And finally, in the very back, was Rachel, Joseph, and Jacob each group bearing gifts to give to Esau when they saw him. Secondly, Jacob wrestles with God. After dividing his family and sending them in separate groups, Jacob was left alone one night and wrestled with the man until the morning. The man then popped Jacob's hip out of joint and told him to let him go. But Jacob refused to let the man go until he blessed him. The man then changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel, meaning prince with God. This was a sign to show his power with both men and even with God. Jacob then calls this place Peniel, meaning face of God, because he declared that he saw God face to face and his life was preserved. Theologically, this was most likely a Christophany, since Jacob is certain that he was with God himself. This then leads to the question as to how Jacob could have prevailed wrestling with God. The most probable answer is that God allowed him to prevail to give him both a blessing by his name change and a constant reminder of his meeting and wrestling with the Lord, a permanent limp. And number three, Jacob and Esau restore their relationship. When these two finally meet, there are two incredible aspects shown by Jacob and Esau, respectively. First, Jacob and his entire family bow down to Esau. In fact, Jacob bows down seven times to him. This was a sign of true respect to someone during this time as unto a king. Then, Jacob constantly refers to himself and his family as your servant to Esau. Secondly, Esau's response after seeing Jacob 20 years later was not anger, hatred, bitterness, or wrath. Instead, Esau embraced Jacob, kisses him, asks to meet his family, tells Jacob that he has no need for their gifts because God has blessed him with so much already, and he even offers to give Jacob 400 servants. But Jacob refuses. Jacob then left and dwelt in the land of Shechem, and built an altar that he called El Elohim Israel, which means God, the God of Israel. And letter F, Dinah is raped by Shechem. One day, when Dinah went into the land to see the other ladies, Shechem, the son of Hamor, took her and defiled her. This caused Shechem to become infatuated with Dinah, and want to marry her. Hamor realized this, so he met with Jacob to secure her hand in marriage for his son. When the brothers heard of this, they were extremely upset and devised a plan to punish the people of Shechem for this act. They tell Shechem and Hamor that they should be circumcised and all their people if they wanted to marry their daughters. Shechem and Hamor agree and then convince all the people of the city to do the same so that they can all share in the possessions of Jacob. Three days after this medical procedure, when they were extremely sore and bedridden, Simeon 
and Levi went into the city and killed all the men. Jacob heard of this and was extremely upset because he was worried about how the people of the land would view it. But the sons of Jacob asked him a question that he could not answer. Should Shechem have dealt with Dinah as a harlot? Maybe this was showing that Jacob should have done what was right for his daughter to begin with, and then none of this would have happened. Letter G. Jacob leaves Shechem. Number one, Rachel dies giving birth to Benjamin. After the previous event, God told Jacob to leave Bethel. In response to this, Jacob tells his entire household to stop worshiping false god, and then he makes them give him all of their idols. We are then told that Rachel was having a hard birth with Joseph's brother, and it actually caused her to die. However, right before her death, Rachel said to name the son Noni, meaning son of my sorrow. But Jacob said no. He will be called Benjamin, son of my right hand. And finally, letter H. Esau's or Edom's genealogy. Genesis chapter 36 basically tells us that Esau had a ton of kids who become princes, kings, and dukes. And that brings us to the end of lecture four of the Pentateuch.